Okay, it's Jeff back again with the fourth in our series of short videos taking you through the key diagrams for externalities and market failure. So important, externalities featuring heavily on advanced information. Hopefully these videos will be useful. If it's okay with you, let's spend a few minutes together working through the diagram on positive production externalities. Quick reminder, as always, externalities are defined as spillover effects from production or consumption, sometimes both, for which no appropriate compensation is paid to one or more third parties affected. We're going to be focusing on positive production externalities, and they occur when the act of production by one agent leads to lower costs to other third party agents in the economy. And as a result, the marginal social cost, or MSC, is lower than the marginal private cost. In other words, the external costs are negative. Now, be careful here. Sometimes you talk about negative externalities leading to higher social cost. In this sense, the external cost is negative. The producer's costs uh, from production generate an effect which actually reduces costs for other people in that sense. Well, hopefully some examples might uh, give you some uh, application here. So it's interesting that people say that there are fewer positive externalities from production than, than the other externalities. Don't necessarily agree with that, but, but here we go. Uh, oftentimes in some industries, the, the fruits of research are made available freely to other users. So the open, so the open source software community is a great example of where um, coders uh, are happy to share some of their coding and their software development for others to amend, improve over time. Of course, that acts as a positive production externality because other people can access the code uh, to their own benefit without having to start from scratch. Uh, there can often be quite significant positive spillover effects from university research and development. So universities uh, provide the upfront research and that might bring down the cost for other people who might have to avoid some of the heavy R&D. That can happen, for example, when you make available some of the fruits of research. Uh, and who knows? You might you might decide to make access open to the to vaccine research uh, during the pandemic. Really good example. Watching a video recently of a Dutch brewing company. I think it was Heineken, one of those big ones. They've managed to uh, recalibrate their production uh, systems, their modern factories, very big breweries so that nearby farmers get access to any waste water in the production process. And that helps to irrigate their crops. A uh, fantastic example of a positive production externality. A lot of farmers these days, and actually communities, are growing wild meadows on part of the land to help bee populations to thrive. Uh, companies and uh, communities might invest in reforestation, which brings down the cost to other producers. Um, and crucially, a lot of businesses now, when they're accessing, when they're trying to provide new factories, outlets and things, often they will make available or invest in sports facilities, which might be then made freely available to local communities, you know, outdoor training centres or parks, uh, basketball courts. This one, I think, is in the fantastic city of Melbourne in Australia. So there are some good examples, I think, of where uh, the act of production generates lower costs for other agents in the economy. Crucial point, of course, and that's why he came, is to work through the diagram together. So we've got private and social costs and benefit on the y-axis, output and quantity on the x. Now, we're going to assume here no consumption externalities, so MPB equals MSB. We're only going to focus here on production externalities. And if there are positive production externalities, then... Uh, the marginal social cost of production will be lower than the marginal private cost. Here we go. That's what it looks like on the diagram. MSC lies below MPC. And at output Q1, I've labelled two points there for you, A and B. So at the free market equilibrium, which just considers private costs and benefits, uh, there is a negative external cost. In other words, the production brings costs down for other agents third-party agents in the economy. So at output Q1, there's the social benefit, uh, A, but there's the social cost. So uh, benefit greater than cost. So therefore, we, if, we, if we stick at Q1, we're probably going to under-provide uh, these positive externalities 
from society's point of view, we'd actually prefer to be at a higher output. This one, labelled here, where MSB equals MSC, social benefit is in balance with social cost. That's output Q2. Uh, and therefore, if the free market, if agents only acting on the basis of their own costs and benefits, if the free market ends up at Q1, uh, then we're underproducing, and that, of course, is a misallocation of scarce resources. Indeed, there's a welfare loss triangle, and the triangle welfare loss, social loss, so social welfare loss, if we underproduce, is the area A, B, C. Don't forget, in the exam, always try to show the welfare loss. That really tells the examiner that you're in total control of, uh, of this kind of diagram. So positive production externality is often associated with the benefits that come from spending on infrastructure, uh, investment in transport and telecoms and things, and health and education infrastructure uh, that help to relieve congestion and speed up logistics operations. So really good spending on infrastructure lowers the cost for other businesses. If you think about the cost of getting goods to market, for example, food to supermarkets and uh, what have you. And also improves the quality of service. So you might be able to link this micro topic, who knows, to the wider benefits of supply side policies designed to increase aggregate supply. And a lot of firms now do have green objectives at part of their core. If you're a parcel delivery company investing in electric vehicles, for example, if you're farmers investing in reforestation or wild, wild meadows, um, a lot of businesses now are prepared to cooperate on joint research and community projects, and that can lead in its wake to positive production externalities. There we go. That, we've now got four key videos, those four absolutely key diagrams. There will be a fifth one on mixed externalities. But for now, stay happy, stay positive, hope the vision is going well, and see you sometime soon.